The Volvo XC60 is perhaps one of the most important cars to Volvo. And I say that because the previous XC60 did tremendously well in many of its major markets. This, as you can tell, is the second generation XC60. And it looks nothing like the older model. In fact, this baby is entirely new from the ground up. This very unit right here is the top-of-the-line T8 twin-engine inscription plus. It's fully imported from Sweden and is priced at 374,000 ringgit. It rides on the new scalable product architecture platform that's purposely designed to accommodate a plug-in hybrid system, but there's also a non-hybrid option like the T5 Momentum that we'll be getting soon. I've already done a full walk-around video of this car, so if you want to watch that video, click on the link in the description box below. But for you first-timers, I'll briefly run things down once more. On the outside, the XC60 is basically a shrunken down version of the XC90. Here in the T8 guys, it gets this unique chrome grille with the Ironmark badge, 19-inch 10-spoke dual-tone alloy wheels and dual exhaust pipes. The wheels can be upgraded to 21-inch items and we're told that the price of it together with the tyres starts from around 15,000 ringgit. That's not too bad, right? Standard items include this full LED headlights with Thor's Hammer LED daytime running lights. Actually, I keep calling it Thor's Hammer but it doesn't even look like it. It just looks like a weird T but it still looks good and very distinctly Volvo. So, call it whatever you want, I guess. Keen observers will notice something different about this car and that's because it comes fitted with this exterior styling pack. For 8,288 ringgit, you get this aluminium, front and rear skid plates, silk metal side mirror caps, as well as AMG style exhaust tips. The rear pipe is hidden somewhere behind, so it's still purely aesthetics. If you choose to go with this styling pack, just keep in mind that the foot sensor for the tailgate release will be moved to the left side of the car, just under this sensor right here. Now, I really like getting in and out of the car. It's really convenient. It's not too tall like the XC90, but just about nice enough for everybody to get in and out of. It's really convenient. Volvo says it's because of this under-wrapped door design, which makes the lower portion of the car here much thinner, hence the convenience. It's great for older people too, except that the rear doors don't open as wide as it should. Shame. In here, as you can probably already tell, is quite swanky and veers towards the minimalistic side of things. Unlike the old car with a chock full of button, the dash here looks really nice, very neat, and also very classy. The only physical controls on the dash are for the media, front and rear defoggers, and emergency signal. Everything else is digitized into this 9-inch Sensors Connect touchscreen display, including the dual zone climate control. With this, you can access just about every feature that comes with the car, such as the active safety feature, 360-degree all-round view camera, head-up display adjustment, and even the entire owner's manual. Good luck with that. The dashboard design as a whole probably won't impress those who prefer the German way of interior designing, but I think this approach will age a little better. Quality-wise, it's right up there among the best in its class, although I think the new Audi Q5, which is not here yet by the way, still takes the cake for the best overall build quality. If you know Volvo, then things like this little Swedish flag on the edge of the seat is a given, but here they've gone a step further by putting it into the chrome strip which outlines the metal mesh trim. And if you find this combination a little bit too bland or not contrasty enough, then I suggest you go with the open pore driftwood trim. In other markets, you get the choice of a two-tone interior, the top part black and the bottom part white. Personally, I like that the most compared to this all-black theme that we have here in this test unit simply because it's more luxurious that way. But at least Volvo is offering a maroon brown option for the seats. Speaking of seats, it's unfortunate that we don't get Nappa leather settling instead with these regular leather seats. It's not bad but it's not impressive either, plus the grain on the leather makes it look rather cheap. 
Comfort wise, it's supportive in all the right areas and there's even an extendable thigh support for both different seats. Over to the center, this entire portion looks as though it's been lifted off the XC90 and only the inscription trim comes with this electronic glass gear shifter. The T5 momentum on the other hand will get the regular stick type. Oh, an interesting thing I learned is that this steering wheel is actually the R design steering wheel and there's perforation on the sides and also explains why there's paddle shifters as well. The only thing missing is the R design badge down here. But you know what I really, really like about this car? It's this 15 speaker Bowers and Wilkins sound system. It is literally hands down the best sound system in its class and it's only available if you choose the Inscription Plus trim. One way of telling if your car comes with it is through this speaker, this tweeter actually from the top and the yellow diaphragm in the speaker right here. I'm not kidding guys, this stuff is really the bomb. And if you play lossless audio files through this USB port right here, you'll be able to hear every layer of a song and the instruments that make it. Just get it. Back here, I've got the driver's seat adjusted to my driving position. And as you can clearly tell, there's lots of leg room, good headroom and decent visibility out. There's only one air vent built into each side of the B pillars right here. And I don't quite like how cheap it feels. And if you're a restless guy like I am who fidgets a lot during a long distance drive, this narrow footwell can be a little bit of a problem. But otherwise, I think it's pretty livable. There's no booster seats back here, just a couple of Isofix anchor mounts, plus a nice little storage area for you to keep your phone underneath your seats away from prying eyes. For practicality, the XC60's boot space is 505 litres large. That's only about 10 litres larger than the older model, but still quite a bit smaller than the Mercedes-Benz GLC and upcoming BMW X3. I like the fact that the seats can be electronically folded if you need more space to lug your stuff around, and the models with the air suspension get the option of manually raising or lowering the boot height. Underneath the boot floor, you'll find a tyre repair kit, and no, this car does not run on run-flat tyres. Before we start talking about the driving experience, let's first talk about the engine under the hood. Primary propulsion comes from a 2.0-litre 4-cylinder engine that's turbocharged and supercharged to produce 320 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. That alone is more powerful than most of its rivals in a class, so that really says something. And on top of that, there's an electric motor mounted over the rear axle producing 87 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. Together, the plug-in hybrid system makes about 407 horsepower and 640 newton meters of torque. That's a lot, a lot of power on paper, but it doesn't really feel like it because the very nature of this car is supposed to be as fuel efficient as possible instead of chasing down some Mercedes AMGs or some sports cars. But the power is there as a really nice bonus. The cool thing is, you know that the car is capable. You know that it can do 5.3 seconds to the 100. But when you're cocooned in this much luxury, you just lose all the care in the world. You don't want to speed so much in a, in a car like this. But it's good to know that it can. I spent about four days with the car and every night I leave it to charge around seven to eight hours to get a full charge, uh, just to be safe. Volvo says depending on the charging output, you get two to seven hours, but I just leave it overnight because that's my routine. And Volvo says you can get 45 kilometers on a full charge. Realistically though, I'm getting 35 and the instrument meter here, the battery gauge in fact, is pretty accurate. Now, I believe the discrepancy has a lot to do with the car's weight uh, because this thing weighs 2.1 tons. But if you ask me whether I feel the weight driving this car around, honestly, I don't because it's really powerful. The easiest way of telling whether your engine is alive or not is to turn your audio down. And even then, sometimes I find it difficult to tell because it's just really quiet. And that is a mark of a well-made plug-in hybrid system. After spending so much time with the car, I find that the 8-speed automatic transmission still has some way to go before it's properly fluid in the way of gear shifts. 
I think the gearing ratio can be adjusted to make full use of the power band and it's not quite BMW in a sense but it would be perfect if it is. Another thing I don't quite like about the car is braking feel and honestly I feel that it's one of the car's weakest links. It's a real challenge to modulate the brake pressure. It's either I brake too little or too much. It's very difficult to get that sweet spot and it can be very annoying when you're in stop and go traffic. And sometimes when you brake you get a lot of oscillating movements especially when you want to park your car and you feel that there's a little bit more space for you to drive up front. You know, it's funny how Honda can do such a wonderful job with the Honda City and Jazz hybrid. So Volvo, I honestly think and feel that you should do something about this. You should pay a little bit more attention to the braking department. <laughs> but having said that, it's considerably better than the XC90. So there is some progress to give Volvo some credit. In terms of steering, there's not much feedback at all from the road, but it's not unusual because it's a Volvo after all, and honestly it doesn't bother me as much. The turning radius is actually pretty decent despite riding on 19 inch wheels, so that bit got me a little bit surprised. As for ride quality, this car is fairly comfortable. We have a hump coming up here, and yeah, damping is not too bad, it absorbs the bump really well and based on previous experiences models with the air suspension will tend to be a little bit more plushy compared to the dynamic chassis that will come with the CKD versions. The downside to this is that like I said earlier you get a lot of rocking motion so I guess it takes some getting used to. The body tends to roll a fair bit more at higher speeds compared to the Mercedes-Benz GLC but not at the expense of traction so that's not a cause for concern. The CKD versions will not get air suspension at all, no matter which model you choose, not even the top trim. So the ride will be stiffer, but we really have to drive that first just to be sure. Last but certainly not least is the safety system. It's the whole deal and you get everything Volvo has to offer, including my favourite pilot assist system. Simply click on the button here on the left side of the steering wheel and what it does is it basically drives on its own at speeds of up to 130 km per hour and it can even steer for you if you've got the lane keeping system on. It's quite literally the best thing ever and it's gonna make all that long distance driving a lot more pleasant, a lot more convenient and a whole lot less tiring. Just think of Pilot Assist as a more advanced version of adaptive cruise control and you won't be far off. Speaking of which, this car also gets adaptive cruise control. Huh. By the way, the Pilot Assist feature that's available on the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and BMW 7 Series. And granted, it's smoother on them both, but they're not really in this price range and category, are they? The very fact that Volvo has decided to put Pilot Assist in a car like this and in a price range like this is commendable. And I don't think any other SUVs out there has this feature. Never mind SUVs, not even cars. To top it all off, there's other stuff like city safety, pedestrian, cyclist and large animal detection as well as blind spot monitoring. So, at the end of the day, the XC60 T8 twin engine packs a lot of power, a lot of safety tech and a lot of style. That's a lot for you to consider and rightfully so because I think, in my opinion, the car is a lovely place to be in and if I had to choose, it would be this over the Mercedes-Benz GLC. But it's also worth knowing that this car is 20% more expensive than the GLC 250 but this has the added advantage of a plug-in hybrid system at least until the GLC 350 comes along. The good news is, the CKD versions will be rolled out in April and pricing for that starts from 299,000 ringgit for the T5 Momentum to 344,000 ringgit for this version minus the air suspension. For that kind of money, what car would you rather buy? That's all for this round of review. Thank you for watching, this has been Matthew and I will see you in the next one.